A short ride and it's the Big Apple. I have a date with a fellow cabbie, John Mancuna, an Irish-American who lives in the predominantly Italian borough of Queens, but like most cabbies, plies his actual trade mainly in Manhattan. Steve, welcome Hi. to New York. You must be John. Yeah, that's it. Well, as I told you when I called you up, it'd be great if I could come to a cab garage to have my cab do, looked at. Do you at. think you, you know where the dipstick is in this? You do? Good luck. See if you can find it. Is he here? Is he? Yes. You see? You're right. Because okay. usually the steering wheel is on this side, you see. What do you reckon? You need some oil. I do, don't I? Yeah. John, that's yours, is it? Yes, that's mine, but uh, I like the flower. I today we're going to go in the black taxi. Yeah, I'm going to take you in a... Uh, I'm gonna... What's going on now in Manhattan is class cleansing. All neighborhoods, no matter what color, are being cleansed of poor people. Like Harlem, which was predominantly African-American now, that's all changing. The uh, wealthier people are buying up the brownstones. The Lower East Side are moving out all the immigrants and wealthier people are moving in. So all of Manhattan is just being cleansed of a, a lower and a middle class that are moving out to, say, Brooklyn, Queens, and the Bronx. So that, that's what's going on. I right noticed now, with so. um, cab drivers that a huge number from Ukraine, from India, Bangladesh, and uh, all yeah. kinds of countries, it's quite rare now to get one who seems to have been born in New York. Yeah, uh, there's 60,000 drivers. 10% would be native born. The yellow cab now is worth $600,000, and that's called the medallion that you would buy for the yellow cab. Oh, wow. So it's a huge investment, whoever uh, wants to buy one. Do you get used to seeing people on the street and telling from their, from their body posture? Yes. That, and then you just drive on. Dress. Yeah, yeah. You know, like uh, a lot of these guys like to dress like gangsters. They'll have the hood over their head, the pants hanging around their ass, Right? Yeah. And the baseball cap sideways. Well, I say, if you're going to look like a gangster, act like a gangster, I'm going to pass you up like a gangster. You know, after an 11 hour shift, you're out of light, it's 3 in the morning, and you hear both doors open and guys jump in. And they go, yo, yo, my man, we're heading up to the South Bronx. And like the hair in the back of the head. <laughs> oh, not at this hour. You, you, you run them up, and then at first you're saying, oh, God, please don't rob me. Then as you get closer, you say, all right, you don't even have to tip me, just pay me. Then as you see the neighborhood, you say, listen, just jump, please. <laughs> just just go, I, I'll, I'll take the loss, I don't really care. And someone was asking me about, you know, what are the benefits? What's your retirement plan like? I said, my retirement plan is 4.30 in the morning, a nine millimeter to the back of the head in the South Bronx. And I said, that's when I've retired. The Big Apple, of course, is not just the Isle of Manhattan. I'm keen to explore the other boroughs and the people that make up the quintessential New York City. So John is taking me to a rather special place in the Italian neighborhood of Queens to meet one such tribe, the Goodfellas, the petty and not so petty types made famous in The Godfather and The Sopranos. This is their social club. So this is it, eh? This is it. You might get in. I don't know if you're going to get out. Oh. <laughs> Hi there. There's tea, coffee, cake, soda in the refrigerator. Fantastic. Help yourself. Well, hello, gentlemen. Oh, hey. I'm uh, hey, yo, hey. I'm Stephen. Hey, yo. Hey. Uh, who, you, you are? Rick. Rick. Stephen, Larry. that's Larry. Larry, hi. Joe. And nice Joseph. Joe. David. David. Mike. 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 There had to be a Mikey. Hey, let's see. Hey, the Mikey. The Mikey. Hey, Mikey. Hey, Mikey. Hey, Mikey. Well, this is what a place. I've always dreamed of being in one of these. Uh, you seem to be pretty keen on your sports. Yeah. We've got racing, we've got football, we've got a whole wall of Yankee, New York Yankees. Every Yankee New World Yankee Series team. team. Wow. Tell me something I've always wanted to know. There's a thing you get in movies, right, in which people are described as running numbers. What does that mean? They have the racetrack. Yeah. And they have how much money is bet on a racetrack? Or the whole total? The whole total. And it's got racetrack total. Yeah. And the last three numbers, if you're lucky enough to play it, you'll win some money. Oh, so you predict how right. much in the course right. of the whole afternoon of the racetrack? Let's say you wanted to play your birthday and it was 410. Yeah. You put a dollar on 410. Next day, you look at the paper, at the end of the racing track, total handle. So it could be anything from 000 to 0 to 999. 999. 
So what are the ways to get an edge on anybody? To get an edge on a bookie or to get uh, an edge on a bookie? Listen, it's real hard today it's to hard. get an edge. So the... Listen, we wouldn't be sitting in this club if they knew how to do that, all right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How you would get an edge? Yeah. See this phone? Yeah. You're in here with a bookmaker. Yeah. I'm out the racetrack. Right. The horse is going to right over the finishing line. Yeah. He's number eight. I press number eight on here. You, ever, you got your cell phone. Yeah. Your, your cell phone will ring. The first number will be eight. That's the winner of the race. Now you're talking to the bookmaker. You say, excuse me, I got to answer the phone. You see number eight. You made a little conversation. All right, I'll talk to you later. I'm Give busy. me eight. Give me number eight. And you got the winner. Who's going to tell me why there's a bullet hole on the door here? The bullet hole it was a Friday we had a card game. And Somebody shot, shot parked the their car and they shot six bolts into the See the one on the wall over there? See next to Cheetah? There's a hole. That ain't a mouse hole. That's a bullet hole. <laughs> oh, my. See it? Yeah. One went through and hit hit one of the players and missed his head. It, it grazed his forehead. And another one back here. That went all the way through. Whoa. And when he said, when the, when the my friend got grazed in his head, he called an ambulance. And he, he says, I'm shot in the head. So the ambulance driver says, the, 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 the person over the phone says, how do you know? He says, there's a hole in my head and blood's coming out. How do you think I know I got shot? So what's your nickname? Big Time. Why are you called Big Time? Because I've done some movies. I've been in about 300 movies. I'm always playing a gangster in the movies. Yeah. I knew the part De Niro played in that movie in Goodfellas. Yeah? Yeah, I knew the guy. He played. He yeah. played, well, the guy's name was Jimmy the Gent. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I knew the real Jimmy the Gent. And yeah. I told De Niro... When he went to go visit him in jail to ask him questions, yeah. De Niro says, listen, this movie ain't going to help my parole, he told De Niro, <laughs> so take a walk. <laughs> and then, and I, I told him the exact phrase, I don't want to mention it, yeah. but the exact phrase how he told him, so De Niro turned around and says, Mink, you really knew the guy. I said, listen, yeah. and he, that's yeah. how I became friends with De Niro. Wow. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Have a nice to see you. Bye. Nice to see you all. God bless you. And, and next time we'll give you both the oh, press when you come in. Before I head off to New Jersey, I have a quick fare to pick up in the shape of a more recent immigrant to the city. Don't drink coffee, I take tea, my dear. I like my toast on the wood side. Taxi! I've always loved it here. Yeah. I mean, the, the British here are pretty invisible. We don't, we don't look like a, a community. The only place you'll find us in numbers is maybe one of the pubs downtown. If there's a football a, going on. Saturday out. morning. Yes. You are now Englishman in New York, of course. That's your... One of the favorite songs I play here. It was also adopted by Jamaicans. There was a Jamaican in New York song. Croatian in the, you know, every, everyone's <laughs> done their own version of it, which I don't mind. I get paid. So people just change change the one word in it and do a cover version. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. A Bosnian Herzegovinian. Yeah. It doesn't quite, quite scan, doesn't. Stephen. <laughs> this is why I'm not in your business. Thank you.